Well, good afternoon. This is Ashley with Court Reserve. Thank you so much for joining our Pickleball Education webinar series today. Uh, before we get started, this is being recorded and it is storming like crazy here at my house in Florida. So if for some reason we lose power, we'll try and figure out what that looks like. But we're gonna go ahead and get started today. We are really excited to have our guest today, Christy from Wolverine Pickleball. It's probably a little colder where she is right now than it is <laughs> here with me in Florida, but we're so excited to have her. And so this will be recorded. This will be up on the Court Reserve YouTube channel um, in the next couple of days. And we're again, so thankful to have her. So I'm gonna stop my share here quickly just so everybody can get a good view of Christy. Welcome. Hi, welcome, hi. <laughs> yeah, it's, snow it's snowing up in Michigan today. So it's definitely chillier. So definitely different than a, than a rainstorm for sure. So, well, thank you again for joining us. I am, I do have some, some slides that we can kind of uh, venture through and, uh, and, and talk about some things that, that you want to let people know about in, in the, in the pickleball world. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started and tell us your story. Tell us about pickleball in your life. Um, so pickleball started, we started Wolverine Pickleball, my business partner, Leslie White and I, um, four years ago, we just kind of stumbled into it. I was too young to play where we went to learn. It was a senior center. I had to buy a senior and training card to be allowed to play there. Um, needs to say they let me play and that was a painful $20 to pay. But um, from there, we just wanted more play. And so we started renting out uh, gyms at and community centers and running our own events. We ran Learn to Play. We ran uh, different ongoing sessions, leagues. Uh, some turn some big tournaments. We'd run out the high schools, run a couple hundred person tournaments, um, all the while looking for a place to rent uh, and build it up. So we, so just before COVID, we had actually found investors were ready to go to build a facility from scratch because we were not finding any warehouses. Um, investors fell through. You know, COVID was too crazy. No one knew what was going to happen. But Leslie and I persevered, and we rented. A, we found a warehouse. We stumbled across it. Um, and it was perfect dimensions, great height, no posts. It was perfect. So we opened that middle of the pandemic, October of 2020, and we have been going strong ever since. And now we've just built it up um, from there and we plan to break ground in a few months. Um, we're just going through the township and getting approvals and everything. And we'll be breaking down ground on a 12 court facility uh, with a bar and the bocce and sand volleyball outside is our big vision. Wow, that's awesome. So in the early days, you know, when people come to court reserve, a lot of times it's they're going to open up a club and they're going to find a warehouse. And what were some of the specific things when you guys were looking for space that was important to you? Uh, well, first off, we started off with like, we knew we need to build the community first. Like we had over a thousand people that we had touches with um, before we even were like getting serious about renting a space because we knew we wanted to have that full from day one. We did not believe in build it, they will come. We wanted to have um, those people together. So that was our main objective first. And while we're looking for space, it's obviously the ceiling height. You needed it to be at least 18 feet, 20 feet or taller. Ours is 24 where we're at. Um, you know, didn't want posts, um, you need, you need the dimensions for the court to be able to fit into it. So that was like our main criteria. You know, we wanted it near a major highway was another thing because we knew we'd have people driving, um, to our place because we knew who our demographic was, who we were, who were coming, who was coming to our tournaments, who was coming to our events at the local schools. So that's, that was our objective, um, when we were looking for a space and it, it just kind of all worked out, but it was putting in all that hard work so that we, when we knew we saw it, we were ready to go you know, the day we saw it, we're, we're putting in the offer and going for it. So, you know, you had the people, the humans that would come before you actually knew that you were looking for a facility. And I think sometimes in the pickleball world, there is a, a conception of, oh, we need to find a building first. And I think having the community, yes, pickleball is the fastest growing sport right now that we see here and around the world as well. Um, but I agree with you. That's awesome. So how did you talk to us a little bit about how you decided what kind of, you know, uh, court flooring, your lighting, uh, what kind of things did you guys talk about that was important for you guys when you're talking about those external things? Um, well, the key was we it had to be better than the community centers because we were going to get people to pay. Um, you know, a lot of people, they could, you know, for two bucks and a cup of coffee, they could play pickleball and it's on a gym floor, lots of lines. And they're like, yeah, that's fine. And we had to, we had to give them a reason to pay more money to come to our place. 
Um, so we flooring was important. We we went with the um, Sportsmaster flooring, so like a tennis court surface. Um, we DIY'd it. We were down and dirty. Um, you know, we were we were bootstrapping this business. We took no investment for this. It was just Leslie and I, and we had our community and came together to do it. And we there's a viral video out of well, viral the pickleball world out there of us on a time lapse transforming the warehouse in one week from a food um, storage facility with lots of freezers, um, like seven giant freezers, um, and changing it into the pickleball facility and being open a week later. Uh, but we laid that floor, you know, it's got seven layers, it's got 2000 pounds of silica sand in it. Um, you know, that's how, that's how we did it. And that was, that was important so that they could have a premium experience. And we put in, you know, we put the premium nuts in. Um, so they have a tight tension cord. They're not a temporary nut. We started with that just cause we were waiting. We were going so fast, you know, who was building for us, couldn't get them to us. Lighting, that is key. I mean, we, we had a delay with our electrician and we heard about it still a, a year later when people come in like, oh, I thought you had, I didn't think your lighting was very good. And we're like, it took us two weeks to get it right, but we were working on it. So you gotta kind of right. have it perfect in the beginning or right. else they're gonna, they're gonna remember or that word will spread. Right. And it's hard to dispel it. Right, right. And so uh, just for the folks online today, don't forget that you can put your questions in the chat or Q&A. And I did have the first question. These are indoor courts for you currently, yes. right? Only indoor. We're up in Michigan. Um, doesn't make sense for us to do outdoor at all. Okay. Do you have a favorite brand of lighting for your courts? Um, well, we just went with a basic LED lighting. Um, the biggest part, I've gone down that rabbit hole for our new facility. Um, we will be looking we've looked at different brands. I don't think there's definitely a definite brand you have to have. It's going to come down to your brightness and all those lighting companies will do um, a design for you and have the number of foot candles, which is a whole nother thing to learn about. But 60 foot candles is about average. Um, you know, we went to some tenants facilities, measured what their lighting was, and that's where we're at. That's the general brightness you need uh, for indoor courts. Okay. I love the fact that you guys did it on your own, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the fact that you were probably not a lighting and flooring expert four years ago. <laughs> no, I mean, when we got the flooring delivered, it was, you know, five 55 gallon drums and a pallet of sand. And the guy was like, you watched the YouTube videos, right? And I'm like, yep. A bunch of times. He's like, you got it. And we did. Awesome. awesome. So tell me about, so your new facility, uh, so you're going from four courts to how many courts? 12 courts. 12 courts. So tell me about the thought process between a four court facility and a 12 court facility. So, I mean, we've, we've run big events up to 20 courts when we transformed like some of the high school tennis courts into things. Um, we just went and kind of figured out the sweet spot, figuring out what our demographic is, how many people are going to come into our warehouse. Also cost effectiveness of building the building. Like at a certain point you're getting, it, it gets to get out of control in your cost. Like, oh yeah, I can build more, I can add more. But then you're adding the land and the parking. And we just kind of honed in that 12 court being the sweet spot for our area um, and what our competition is and what kind of events we want to run. That's awesome. So as far as like the rest of the facility, um, you know, are you doing showers, bathrooms? Are you providing food? Um, you know, talk to us a little bit just to, about that. Okay, so currently um, we provide some light snacks, um, drinks that people can purchase. Uh, we don't have showers. We have a, you know, one stall bathroom that you can share. I mean, that's a whole nother thing. If you're getting into a warehouse, there's a whole lot of zoning stuff that you got to jump through to make that work because they're not zoned for indoor recreation in general. Mm. Um, for our bigger facility, we will have a shower in each locker room. We're not doing a, a club feel. We're not building it like a tennis facility. Um, so there'll be light locker rooms is what we like to call it. And then we'll have a food truck bay and we'll do some of those fancy RFID vending machines for our food. I love the food truck aspect. That's awesome because you can bring community people in to help feed your people. So that's exactly. amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, talk to us about, uh, you know, your timeline. So when you guys, like, what's the process that you've seen? Because now you're opening a second facility from the time you find a facility to you can open your front doors. What's that feel like? So for the warehouse, we signed the lease um, and we were in the building in less than a month. But by the time I had my keys to having my first people pay, play pickleball, it was eight days. So, but that was having all the prep done ahead of time and being ready for it to know what we were going to do. Um, like we didn't contact court reserve until we had the lease signed that we were ready for that next step. 
yep. but we had talked and kind of narrowed it down and had done some research. Um, for our new facility, the, the timeline from like signing the contract for the land to like putting the shovel in the ground with all the zoning and everything, you're looking at least a year, honestly, because if you're going to have to change zoning, getting all the architectural drawings, all the engineering drawings, you never, you will learn more about water retention than you ever thought you needed to. That is like number one thing. Like I learned so much about water flow, pervious pavement, pervious pavers, impervious, the ratios, how the water has to flow, manhole colors, trench cover. I mean, it's a lot. Wow. Wow. So now you're, <laughs> that's awesome. There's a question here. That's a really good question. Is there a recommended height minimum when you're building a facility? Well, um, USA Pickleball says um, like 18 to 20 feet is your indoor height to have um, for courts and for laps and stuff. And I've played in facilities that are 16. Yep. It's a little too short. You wow. want it, you want it a little higher, 18. I'd say 20. Ours is 24. Our new facility would be even higher, just the way the structure is built. Yeah, for sure. All right. So let's move on from the facility and talk about those humans that support you. Um, you know, you probably call them staff or people. Do you have a front desk or or your staff? Talk to us a little bit about that. Um, so we are bootstrapping this baby. So Leslie and I have put in a lot of hard hours. Um, we are there. We we staff it the majority of the time. It's between us kind of separating. We have some helpers that help um, to staff the office uh, when we're not there to give us some relief or run our parties. Um, we also have a staff of instructors to do that. But our dream is a bigger facility. So we kind of did a different route. Like we could definitely have it staffed more, but we want to build our community and our culture. So we like to have those touch points with people so that when we get to the next level, we've taken in like kind of the wisdom of the crowd and what they want. And so um, we're ready for the next step and it'll be full when we start. Because when people come to visit us, they always talk about the quality of pickleball at our place, like especially visitors coming from out of state. They're like, wow, you guys really play pickleball here. And the other thing is how welcoming and nice everyone is that they will take a newbie, a new player to our facility under their wing and kind of show them how we operate. and to have great conversation and that's what people love about our place so that's part of leslie and i being the secret sauce and being there a lot of time so it kind of depends on what your dream is and how you want to build it i could easily staff it and not be there um, if i just wanted to do a four court facility wow i love that you want to create an environment the way that you want to create it and, and that mm -hmm. that is a powerful brand right there so i'm ready to get on a plane and fly to michigan and play pickleball at your place i just want to experience it so that's, yeah. that's amazing. So, so we have a quick question. Um, how many people, members or players, do you think that you can have for a 12 court facility uh, based on like players per court, et cetera? That's a really tricky question because it kind of depends on what you define as a member and how you set up your membership. Like if you're gonna pick, have people, and we've gone through all these different scenarios. So it kind of depends on what you want out of your facility. Um, if you want, uh, more reliable income, you can charge more for a membership that includes all of their play. There's a segment of my population that wants to pay a higher amount and then just know every time they come in, they never have to pay. Um, so that's one number that you could have, and that's going to change your number versus like we do it as we have a lower membership cost and that comes with some perks, but you're going to pay every time you come to play. So I can't say what the right number is. It's going to depend on how people run that business and what they want to do out of it. And how they structure everything. I know people who have no membership, you just pay every time you come. Um, there's all sorts of different ways to do it. And you just have to think about what your demographic wants, what your community wants and what they're willing to do. So you have a combo. So basically you have a membership that you can come and pay a higher membership and play without any kind of fee. And then you I have- No, I don't have that. I didn't, oh, okay. we didn't do that. We have just the membership where you pay um, and you get a, like a little discount, but you're paying, um, still paying every time you play, even though you play a monthly membership. And then I have people who uh, never pay a monthly membership, but they can still come into play. So okay. it just depends if people want to run it like a tennis club where you don't have all the visitors. We, we want the visitors because we're building the community. We didn't want to um, lock it in. Absolutely. So I think we skipped over. We're still on the staff screen here. Is there any final words around like your facility, your staff, any encouraging words before we move on to our next? I don't think we have to worry about the um, all the employment issues that people are having around the country. 
with pickleball, I have a long list of people that just want to work for us. Because they just want to be around the pickleball. So I think that's the one big plus you have going in with pickleball. Yeah. So you build the right culture and then people just line up to work for you. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. I love that. Okay. So the next topic we're really going to talk about is memberships and pricing. And, you know, um, I don't know, you know, as far as like, we've, we've kind of already broached that subject. Um, how would you, you know, knowing what you know now, you know, years later and, and two clubs later, really, would you define how you came up with, you know, your pricing model? I mean, I, I think sometimes people come to court reserve and they're like, all right, tell me how to price my memberships or tell me how to price my courts. How did you guys do the research to come up with what you thought was best? Um, well, we looked at like kind of what the competition is um, in the time. So we looked at what what are people being charged to play at the community centers, the senior centers, um, and the people that we're going to pull from there to come to our place. We're still there's some people that will never come to our place. We're too expensive. Um, they just want to play for free. They want to play socially. They're fine with that, and that's that's cool. We don't need to capture everyone. But we also compared it to what people would do for a two hour time period. What do the movies charge? What does a bowling alley charge? Um, and kind of pulled all that information together to come up with what our price is per two hours that people would feel comfortable with. And the, but the other thing to add into that is people come multiple times a week and what will, are they willing to pay per week? So, you know, your hardcore users. So it's a big algorithm and it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of work, but, um, you know, once you, once you get it, it's, it's good and people are happy yeah. about it. Have you felt like you needed to change your pricing model since you've had the first club or have you stuck to it? We've pretty much stuck to it. We will make some adjustments when we move to our bigger place because we're kind of in a bare bones warehouse. So we kind of priced for being in a bare bones warehouse. Um, I could probably be charged more right now because we have long wait lists for everything. Um, but that's not my goal because I'm building something bigger and I don't feel like that's right to kind of gouge people on that. I love it. I love it. So um, just so you guys know, Wolverine Pickleball, they have a great pickleball site. You can actually go out to Wolverine Pickleball. Is it dot com? Yeah, right. Wolverine Pickleball dot com. And you can learn a lot about how they, you know, run their memberships and, and, and everything that they do. They they really do a great job. Their site's great. I actually use your site when I demo it to people because your oh. integration of Court Reserve and, and the detail that you put into it's fantastic. So talk to us about um, like people coming from out of town. You, you keep mm -hmm. talking about like you guys are close to the interstate and, and people are coming. When those people show up at, at your facility, are you asking them to kind of sign up for the court reservations and things before they get there? Are they walking through your front door without even doing anything? Talk to us about that. No, everyone comes into our door. They have a reserve spot. We do not like in general, take any kind of walk-in. Um, people are really good about, they go to our website. We direct them right to, um, to court reserve to register to play. Uh, they register. They, it's so easy to use court reserve to do that online reservations. Um, so people know to do that. We, we get a few phone calls, but not too much. It's pretty self-explanatory, intuitive for people to use. But, um, and you know, it's, it's people just go, traveling and they're going pickleball in the area kind of thing. And that's how we get found. I mean, you know, today I had someone what, from Alaska, another person from California, another person from Arizona that were just coming in visiting family and stuff. So, wow, um, it's easy. It's great. So have a good website, have a, have a good Google search, right? Yeah. Uh, pickleball in your community for sure. Yeah, um, talk to us about, uh, you know, what you see coming as far as membership and pricing with pickleball becoming so popular and so many other uh, clubs and organizations popping up. How do you stay competitive with your memberships and pricing? Well, I think it comes down to what you offer and your programming and what you, what you do from there. I mean, um, sure, there's other people, places people could play, but like we really value people's time when they come into play. It's play, play, play. Like you are not sitting. Like we are valuing your time. We are valuing the level of play. Um, I've become a master of the very uncomfortable conversation of saying you are not up to level. You are overmatched in a very mm -hmm. kind way, so that um, when so that when others come here to play, they are playing competitive levels. That's the best pickleball is when you're playing people of your level. You're not overmatched. 
um, you know, where you're getting beat up on. I don't care how many times I hear it from people going, I had a great time. You know, it was no problem. Nope, you were the trap on the bottom court. You couldn't get off of it. And you were getting beat, beat 11-3, 11-4, 11-3, over and over. Like, that's no fun for anybody. Right. Um, and so we are very good about getting people rated and getting them in the right level. That's awesome. That's great. Um, since you're in Michigan, you guys probably, you know, a lot of the clubs that Port Reserve, um, along with you, it's because you're, you know, really in the winter, nobody wants to play outside when it's 10 degrees. Is yep. that something since you've, you know, been open for a few years now, is it something that you see more membership in the winter months versus the summer or once they come in and play during the winter months when it's nice and warm inside, do you see them continuing their membership with you even in the summer months? Yes. Um, we had a great last summer. We didn't, we didn't know what to expect. We exceeded our expectations, um, but it comes down to our community, our connection that, you know, people, besides having free pickleball outside of the public courts, um, everyone has other things to do. Lots of people play golf, you know, go on vacation, all that. So you're gonna see people disappear anyway but they keep coming back to us because of what we offer. We make it easy for them to come in and play, to get good competitive games. Um, we do lots of lessons and programming. We're always trying to elevate the game of pickleball with people. Um, so it comes down to programming and having that community to draw them back in. I mean, I think that is the biggest key when you're opening a pickleball facility is how are you gonna pay for it in the summertime? Cause winter, yep, that's easy. You don't really have, you, you could be very um, lazy about how you develop it over the winter. The court time will just fill up. Um, instantly just because there's no place else to go. So, you know, the courts are what they are in the winter. They're going to fill up, but the culture that you build and the service and the customer experience is what carries people through the summer months yeah, at your organization. Definitely. I love it. That's amazing. That's awesome. All right. So let's move on to our next slide here. Instructors and lessons. Tell, talk to us a little bit about private instruction and lessons at Wolverine Pickleball. Um, so, we have all sorts of lessons. We meet people wherever they want. We have visiting pros come in um, to run their clinics. We also have our in-house um, in instructors. Uh, we have a variety of instructors, depending on you know, what level they want to teach. We have like, oh, we always have learn to play going a couple times a week. Um, we have like stuff for two fives. We're really hard. Um, we kind of force the new players to get better. We will build in lessons when they come to play because we want to elevate the game. Um, and get them playing pickleball the right way. We don't want people just hitting the ball. We want them to understand that this is a game of pickleball, um, not mini tennis and stuff. So we, so we bake in, um, you know, a, a skill lesson in their play for like some of the lower level, the novice players. Uh, we run like a lot of three and coach, um, all sorts of different kind of group lessons. What people ask for, you know, they want a special session on something like we'll do it. So we'll set it up like that. Nice. And so you have some in-house instructors and then how do you, how do you work with those contract instructors? Uh, do they just come in and kind of pay for their own court time? How, how do you do that? Um, like if we have any of the pickleball pros come in, um, we usually market it and handle all the costs in-house, run our, run it through our system. Uh, just, it's easier to cover for the liability. We know how it's filling. Um, we've never not sold out a clinic with a visiting pro just because we know our membership. And it's also a perk we can offer our membership. If you're a member, you kind of get first dibs on these events. So Wow, so you have yeah. pros. So are you inviting pros to come and teach at your club or pros are reaching out to you guys and saying, hey, I'm gonna be in your area. I'd love to come do a class or a clinic. Both. Wow, you're on the map. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, you know, a lot of times facilities are, are wanting, especially new facilities, you know, how do we get the word out about our impressive facility, our great facility, right? And I think that's a great way is to reach out to the pros who are trying to make a living playing pickleball and teaching pickleball. And, and that's a, that, that's a great marketing campaign. And also put your, you know, um, you know, definitely your place on the map as well. Have you found that is there an average number of private lessons that you see a new player, you know, often takes? Because um, sometimes people give us the question at Court Reserve, like, how can I make money on pickleball lessons? Because, you know, it, it takes a little bit longer, in our opinion, to learn how to play like the sport of tennis, right? You're going to need a few more lessons than you do pickleball. So is there kind of an average number of lessons you see that new pickleball players take? Uh, and not really. I mean, it kind of goes across the board with how, what their desire is to get better. Some people are 
incredibly happy at the novice level in that 2.5 to 3.0. They'll take our general skill and drill um, or skill and play session and they'll take that every week, but they have no desire to get better. They're, they love the group they're in. It's fun, it's social. Uh, so they're where they're at. And then I have like a higher level, they're coming in from tennis and they they don't want to play with any groups until they're good at pickleball. And they'll they'll book like a six week series of private lessons, which to me is really intense. Like I don't want to be the center of attention for an hour in a lesson, but um, we do have people that do that. So it's kind of a range. Um, a lot of times when we have, when we find people are overmatched for a group that they signed up for, or they wanted to, to go to the next level, they're like, I want to be a three, five. And we'll be like, this is where you need some help. This is, we have some strategy classes and court positioning classes and we kind of push them that way. So we kind of meet people where they want to be um, or if they want to be able to be able to play with their friends uh, in our general sessions, then, you know, they'll have to take some lessons to get up there because we're pretty tough on that. Yeah, I love it. Well, because again, it goes back to pickleball. You want to play in your zone. If you mm -hmm. play out of your zone, it's no fun for either person. Uh, regardless exactly. of what they say. So that's yeah. really good. Um, all right. So let's talk about your programming because it sounds like you guys, not even like ladders, leagues and tournaments, but your programming, your classes. Um, how did you develop those classes in the beginning? And how did you morph those classes as you've gone over the last couple of years? Because a lot of the questions that we get in court reserve is, yeah, we can start off with some basic classes, but you know, how do you, how do you build on those? Um, well, it's getting to know your community. I mean, and talking to them and seeing what do you, what do they want out of it? You know, I mean, it's even approaching private groups. We have some large private groups and we'll say, Hey, do you want a lesson this week? We'll do a little drill and play session. We'll upcharge you that week for just like a little half hour thing, like a little sampler. Um, and that'll, you know, our instructors can, um, get people from there to go into other classes. So we, we did a lot of private groups to start off with. And now we've added some, we've added a lot more where people can sign up for the lesson. Um, and we do them by like skill level as well, because, you know, that's the same thing in a lesson as it is in play. You want to be around people who are of the same skill level. There's nothing worse than if you have too much of a difference. You're just not going to get a good rally going or the one person will get all the attention because they're the farthest behind. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Your big, your beginner classes for your beginner players. Do you see a bulk of people in those classes versus like, you know, your three, five, four, five classes? Do you see more beginners? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, and that's, that's going to be the majority of players anyway, you know, especially with the sport growing so much, the majority of players, um, you know, the two, five to three, oh, is a big chunk, you know, then the three, five is a big chunk, then it thins out a little bit as you get higher and higher. Okay. Have you done anything around like uh, classes? Like I've seen some like play with the um, play with the pro or, mm -hmm. you know, some of those kind of things. Do, do you feel like it, it's almost a spectator sport at that level? You know, when the pros get out there and want to play with some of the members, it's not even that people sign up to do that. It's that they come and watch because they want to be entertained or, or see uh, because they just love the sport so much. Yeah, well, yeah, we did some of that for sure. But I mean, you know, playing with our instructors and stuff, people love that lesson because they're they're being coached the whole time and you're rotating through. And even when we have the visiting pros come in, we do a lot of that three and pro and they pay a premium for that, but it's a really intimate um, and great experience. But yeah, awesome. we do get a lot That's of people so like cool. to watch. All right, let's talk about ladders. Do you guys run any kind of pickleball ladders at the club? We are too jam-packed to offer that right now, um, but we will over the summer. Okay. So how does that work where I basically challenge or a team challenges each other and they kind of go up and down on the ladder? Um, we've done, we, we have done it a little bit that way. Um, people really, we do, the leagues are more popular than the ladders. Um, the ladders feel like they get a little repetitious after week after week. Cause if you're keeping track of everyone kind of moving up and down, if you have the same crew, um, it was only four courts. It's kind of hard to uh, make it interesting every week. Uh, but that's another way in the summertime, you just hook people in for, you know, a four week or eight week kind of session kind of thing. Okay, very good. And uh, tell, talk to us about your leagues, because I know that's one of the things that Court Reserve we're, you know, building right now and trying to push out as a league and ladder module. How does that work for you guys? Um, we've used pickleball brackets to run our leagues and um, just because then it goes into the rating and people mm -hmm. like that, you know, if they don't agree with our assessment like then that you have another proof or something or they can work and show it because it combines their tournaments because we use that for our tournaments as well uh, nice. to get that rating into it 
And the leagues, is it like um, how many, like how many weeks and is it mixed? Is it doubles? How, how do you guys do that? Uh, we do, we do have some, uh, I mean, we're limited because we only have the four courts. So we, we will do some co-ed um, men's, but mostly it's co-ed that we found, not, not necessarily meaning mixed, it can just co-ed at that level. Um, and we, we usually run things in one month chunks. Uh, just because we find like the subbing issue just gets to be a headache and people find it much easier to commit to a one month time frame, especially when you get through the summer months. Yeah, because people are traveling and things and yeah, for sure. And that's, so, and that's usually how far people are willing to commit out for that we found. That's right. So when they show up for a league match, what does that look like? Um, a league match would just be... Uh, they play two out of three or something, or, I mean, it just depends on what our format is. They might play um, uh, two games just eat, um, that week and we mix it up and uh, they might rematch again a few weeks later. Just depends on how the timing is and how many okay. teams are in it. Okay. And then you guys, sounds like you've done some tournaments at your facility. Talk to us about what those tournaments have been like. Um, at our facility with only four courts, we do like round robin. So there's um, like skill rated round robin. They, we can do them in three hours, um, nine teams. People love them. Um, they sell out quickly. We just turn them out. We will run them again more during the summertime because uh, we're just jam packed right now. Uh, then we've, we've run some offsite ones. We did one with like the Detroit Pistons um, a couple months ago, you know, did a hundred person tournament. We did an offsite you know, we set up eight courts on their basketball courts and stuff. It's, a, it's kind of a novel thing to do. And that was like a lot of fun. And we've run a couple hundred person tournaments where we do um, offsite, obviously, uh, where we convert tennis courts um, into pickleball courts at like the local high school. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome. So the new 12 courts will come in handy. Oh, absolutely. We're ready to roll. <laughs> do you ever um, sell block time? Um, you know, I, this is one of the questions about how much time is booked on court reserve using block time. But do you guys sell block time to groups? Uh, or time? Very limited. We just are so jam packed and I want a lot of people to come into our place. The only block time we offer is like some Monday afternoons, just because that's kind of a little bit of a slow time. And these ladies, you know, they just want set time. Um, otherwise, yeah, we don't. We're just so full. We just can't. It's a good yeah, problem. time. <laughs> yeah, it's a great maybe in the 12 court facility you can have some you can sell block time <laughs> we will I mean we have demand for it. we have people that want it we set up a lot of uh like late night groups where people it's, so it's kind of a block time um but we don't take a prepayment it's um a, it's a member group that we create in court reserve so then each person can sign up and um withdraw as they need so it's kind of easier on the organizer um you know it's nine to eleven at night it's you know it's easy it's extra it's past That's our usual nice. hours so you guys are not a 24-hour facility you have an open and a closed time uh we we can be 24 hours we we do have some people we have door code um okay. so people can be in there at all hours we will not be there but they can be there yes absolutely that's yeah absolutely i'm not playing pickleball at 2 a.m but some people may <laughs> yeah we've got a few we've had a few um okay so Round robins and open plays, now not even tournament, but really around the open play. Do you guys do that every day or how do you do open plays? So open play, we like to say it's skill rated play. Like a lot of people think of open play as like all skill levels come come to that. And then you're paddle stacking and doing kind of what happens on the public court, not at our place. Um, everything is skill rated. So we run sessions, like we run the two, five to three up every day of the week, three up every day of the week, three, five to four up every day of the week. So there is a session for everybody to find a spot. If you're above a four up private court time, uh, not worth the hassle of trying to, to deal with the people who think they can hang. Um, so we just offer those sessions and you sign up based on your skill level. Love it, love it. Uh, juniors, kids, do you have many of those? I do have a few. We let them play with the adults. We don't do any age restrictions. We have ages 10 to now 89 is our oldest that we've had play at our place. Um, and as long as the child's mature enough to be in the group, they can. We have a lot of times a parent will come with them. They'll pair up for like a double session. Uh, we do, we've run some teen glow nights. So we've done some stuff with teens. I just need more court time. I got the local high schools that want to do pickleball teams. I just don't have court time for them yet. But all, our advantage is all the schools around us have been teaching pickleball to the kids for the last 20 years. So we get a lot of adults that go, I remember this, you know, 15 yes. years ago. 
Right. So in your new facility, it's possible to have some high school leagues and stuff because you have yep. so much around you. That's um, what we plan to do. That's awesome. So in your new 12 court facility, do you see that maybe the opportunity to maybe do summer camps for kids or maybe team building events for companies? And, and oh, yeah, we already do that. Yep. Wow. Talk to me about that. The team building. How does that work? Um, it's kind of a social event. You know, we do, we do, uh, kind of down and dirty, uh, learn to play. They bring in, you know, BYOB food. Um, and we just set them up. We provide all the equipment, um, and we get them going. And then depending on how many there are, we'll play like a King of the court kind of scenario, or we'll just do a paddle stack or we'll do a round robin. Depends on what they want to get out of it. But we've done all sorts of, we've done, um, college, like the college sports, the U of M teams, we're going through them. Like we did water polo last week. We got the um, field hockey team coming in so any kind of team can come in for pickleball for uh, team building anybody can play pickleball that's yeah. Awesome. oh yeah Let's call, we had the women's basketball team like you weren't getting a lob over their head <laughs> no for sure for sure for sure well this has been great I, I just really appreciate you and, and Leslie and everything you guys are trying to do to build the sport up um, in your community I'm so excited for you guys to have a new place when is the when's the door going to open for the new place do we have one we I don't have a day for the door to open shovel in the ground is probably going to be June July we're still getting some final um, site plan and permitting stuff going um, you know it's not on my timetable it's on the on the government kind of timetable <laughs> wait for those meetings Okay. Um, anybody have any final questions that you'd like to ask our expert pickleballer today, Christy? And uh, Christy, while they're coming up with their last questions, do you have any final encouragement or thoughts you want to send out? Uh, I think you just got to know your market. Have your have your tribe ready to go is the biggest thing um, to be ready to go into the next level. It's, that community has been been wonderful to us um you know it's been we've been surprised at who's supported us that we didn't expect it was both ways who didn't support us and who does you know so um really know your community that's awesome well very good information thank you again for joining us today we'll put this up on the court reserve youtube channel and we'll all be visiting wolverine pickleball soon especially when so. there are 12 courts built so all right guys have a great day take care thanks for joining us Bye bye, bye, -bye.